Hi, this is Dave Vellante, and we're back. We're at 590 Madison Avenue, and we have a CUBE alum, Inhi Chosa, is here. And uh, Inhi, thanks very much for spending some time with us. It's always great to see you. Oh, good seeing you, Dave. Yeah, so we saw each other last week in California, uh, the big data, big data management announcement, uh, oh, which yeah. was very exciting. Uh, we've been covering that like crazy on, on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. So take us through what you guys announced and what customers are saying about it. Oh, uh, it, we're really excited, and the feedback has been tremendous since the announcement last week, Wednesday. Um, it, it's really about speed and exploration. Big data at the speed of which businesses are operating, and so what we're doing is we're really enabling clients to consume it better and more. So one of the big things that we announced was big SQL capabilities in our Infosphere Big Insights. Because we found out, you know what, clients were having a hard time adopting it. They didn't really have the skills in-house to get this stuff set up quick enough. Uh, that was one piece. Another piece of the consumability, we also announced the IBM Pure Data System for Hadoop. Uh, and that is in an appliance like Simplicity, so that it's really a data load ready system for big data projects uh, within under four hours. I mean, that's what we're committing to clients. So uh, a lot around com uh, consumability, performance, speed, exploration. Yeah, so we just had Steve Mills on and we've been talking about the synergies across his lines of business. So it's interesting to see you here as a big data analytics you know, person supporting the flash announcement. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, IBM is uh, really investing in Flash at an um, incredible level. So we announced today our strategy around $1 billion of um, investments in uh, research, which includes development, acquisitions, as well as other um, optimizations that we'll do, both in the hardware storage as well as software uh, layers. The other aspect which is exciting is this kind of marries into some of the announcements that we made around DB2 with Blue Acceleration. So Blue Acceleration is our new dynamic and memory uh, capabilities, which allows you to take um, advantages of things like, you know, active compression. So now you can have more compressed data that can take advantage of kind of the advantages of flash or taking uh, advantages of more parallel computing cap uh, capabilities and some of the hardware trends that you're seeing in flash and, and systems design. So let's talk about a little bit about the big data space. You're obviously, you know, really immersed in that area. Yeah. Um, IBM has just done a tremendous job uh, taking its analytics business and really driving to what we've cited it as a number one status in, in the industry. So um, what's going on there? You're seeing the sort of old world, DB2, and the new world, Hadoop, come together. You're seeing real time, in memory. Take us through, help us squint through all the you know, machinations in that business. What's going on? Well, you know what it is, is um, it's actually sort of a confluence of things coming together, right? Clients are saying, you know what, there are new types of mobile applications. Some clients want to access things via the cloud. There's higher degrees of uh, power shifting to consumers. And all of that is tri driving kind of fundamental changes in how we do entire systems, architecture design, and software design. Now, if you think about it from a data standpoint, um, really what clients want to do is just really get better insights faster. And the investments that we're making are enabling clients to do that. And some of the new technologies and the ability of bringing all data together with the new technologies is much more affordable than it's ever been. And uh, it's just kind of an exciting time to get clients all started and, and some of the use cases that we're discovering. So one of the big themes that you hear is, is bringing real time to Hadoop. Um, and uh, it's, it, there's an interesting debate going on. I was talking to Stefan last week at the yeah, IBM yeah. announcement, Stefan from Datamere. Who's, who's, he's an early day practitioner of. Oh, yeah, you know, one helped, of the uh, predecessors helped, for. Uh, uh, yeah. For, for, helped build, the, the, build yeah, out for the Hadoop. So, mm -hmm. and, he, and he's essentially saying, you know what, Hadoop is, is really designed to be batch, and, and you know, the, the rest of the world you know, will, will connect to it. Um, but a lot of people disagree with that. A lot of people are really trying to make Hadoop look more real time. What's your take on all this? You know, uh, <laughs> Well, I have a very strong point of view on this because no, I think... That's why I'm asking you. I'm putting you right on the spot because I, I um, want yeah. to hear your, your angles. Well, Great. you know what? Real time is, is all relevant, right? Relevant to the type of workloads and types of transactions right. um, that you want to run and types of analytics you want to run. So um, IBM's really the only vendor that has what we call streaming technology, the ability to consume um, all sources and all types of data in true real time. So, and when you think about Hadoop, um, the capabilities of Hadoop is really offline batch, right? Um, and, be, and the design point is to leverage sort of the distributed in memory and file system capabilities of that kind of architecture. With stream 
machine computing, it's a completely different design of being able to sense and respond. I mean, when I think about Hadoop, think about kind of the things that you do in your head, right? You're in a mode of deep reflection. You want to sit back, think about, think about what happened during the day, think about what happened during the years. Versus in your sense and respond mode, if something happens, the last thing you're doing is actually thinking deeply at that moment. You're naturally responding to based on instinct, prior experience, it, all under less than a second. So those are kind of very different um, requirements in terms of the architectural design. So uh, I, I think pushing that in terms of the Hadoop system is going to be a real stretch. The stream, so let's dig into that a little bit. So that'll allow you to process data in real time before you even persist it, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's an ability to actually uh, stream the data, ingest the data as it's is coming out, understand kind of the anomalies of what's happening, and then take action very quickly. And what's exciting about it is we're also enabling things like being able to take um, the modeling work you do in SPSS, those operators could actually reside in stream. So even as the data flows in, you can optimize even the models in which you're predicting and analyzing some of the behaviors and patterns, and then optimize that into and, and automate that into your workflow and process. Yeah, you guys have a lot of the pieces. I mean, you've got the Cognos piece, you mentioned SPSS, yeah. you've got the Informix piece, which gives you time series. Uh, you've got your own Hadoop distribution now, and big insights, streams, I mean, your portfolio is really un unmatched in, in the business. Do you feel like you have all the pieces and now it's really about executing and going to market, um, doing some organic development, seeing what else pops up and maybe acquiring that if necessary? Or are you guys where you want to be with your analytics business? Um, uh, yes to all of those statements, all of the above, uh, in terms of the That's investments mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of everything that we want to do. And I would say we're never satisfied. Why? Because it, what drives IBM is a natural curiosity for how clients are, are really leveraging this stuff. And I would say even over the last two years, we've learned a lot. Um, we've learned a lot about like the five um, primary entry points in which uh, clients are getting started around big data. Um, we're also learning kind of as clients get into it, you just don't know necessarily how they're going to reapply some of the analytics or the way some of the decisions are going to be optimized or fundamentally how it's transformed entire delivery systems and business models for companies. So we're sort of on the early stages. I definitely want to stay in, at the head of the pack and the goal is uh, to continue to innovate. You know, so I, what I really do like about IBM is you guys talk about business outcomes, you talk about business value, um, but I'm an analyst so we'd like to also <laughs> talk about the platform and the competition and so yeah, you're seeing, I mean, everybody coming out with a Hadoop distribution. John Furrier announced the other yeah. day that Silicon and angles coming out with a Hadoop distribution, you know, <laughs> tongue in cheek. But um, so there's a lot of discussion around, okay, will there be a red hat of Hadoop? Mm. Will there be? You know, that's interesting. I think one of the constraints around Hadoop um, is the lack of skills around understanding MapR, understanding the different types of um, uh, capabilities, whether it's uh, HBase, Hive, so forth. The, the thing that you're going to start to see more vendors provide, like IBM, is uh, big SQL capabilities. And the reason is, is why most clients already have existing SQL skills in-house. They want to be able to tie back to their existing investments. Um, and so my view of this is it, it's going to continue to evolve. Um, but more importantly, most clients say, you know what, I've got a lot of data in my enterprise. I've got a lot of existing skills in my environment. I want to be able to leverage and get as much value out of the existing investments as possible while I start to innovate and do new things. So IBM's often criticized because of its you know, huge services business. Everybody says, oh, they're going to throw a bunch of services at me. Um, but in the Hadoop world, in the big data world, people need help uh, actually figuring out how yeah. to monetize data, wh what data sources can I use, what's my new data architecture look like. I've said I see IBM services business as a huge differentiator. And then we've sized the market about 50% is services. Again, you don't like to talk about it too much. I think there's a sensitivity there, but to me, services is like a secret weapon that you have that complements your your rich technology portfolio. Can you talk about the role of services a little bit? Oh yeah, so service is a huge piece. I think what clients are really doing today, at least in some of the big data projects, were more sandbox side type projects, especially in terms of the Hadoop capabilities. And because they don't have the skills in-house, they really do need services. Services to implement, services to think through the types of analytics that they want to build, as well as some of what we call analytics accelerators, right? Um, the types of analytics you want to do around social media data or machine generated data um, around Tel telecommunications, right? Certain types of annotations, certain types of data models, analytic models, um, certain algorithms that you start to create. And you need a lot more SMEs to do this, not just in terms of the traditional, um, uh, you know, computer science engineers, but actually applied math and applied mathematicians mm -hmm. and business analysts. So you're going to see that in, in improved um, 
uh, kind of dynamic in terms of the teaming and, and the services required, both in-house in terms of the cultural change and skills, as well as service practitioners. And I see a lot of global uh, systems integrators um, uh, really expanding to, to say, okay, how do I partake as, as, as part of the big data market differently than maybe historically done because of the new technology base? And this business is in such flux. I think Sam, Sam Palmasano said that no matter what business you're in, you're going to get commoditized. And, uh, and that's happening in services. It's certainly happening. You know, Mark Andreessen said software is eating the world. Well, open source software is eating yeah. the software world. And IBM is just, you know, continues to, to stay ahead of the pace and move fast. So congratulations on all the progress that you've made. I'm glad to hear that you're not done. Uh, Inhi, thanks very oh, much. Oh, far from always, done. Far always from done. Always a pleasure <laughs> seeing you. All right. All right, keep it right there, everybody. This is Thank Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and this is theCUBE. We'll be right back.